So the UK court has just ruled that Julian Assange can appeal his extradition to the US. If you've been following this case, he got dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy, charged with skipping bail. He got put in Belmarsh prison, maximum security prison for the amount, maximum amount of time uh, that you can. He was behind there for 50 weeks, but then they keep him behind bars because the US unveils an extradition request. The extradition request is because he was a journalist and revealed things back in 2010 that they've been persecuting him for ever since. Now, since that time, Julian has appealed the extradition. He initially won the case. The UK judge said, listen, we don't believe in freedom of speech, but we do believe that Julian would self-harm if he made it over to the US. And we also don't really trust the US prison system. Look what happened to Chelsea Manning. You guys, she was, her sentence was commuted by Obama. You guys literally rearrested her and then she attempted suicide. So we're not going to trust you with Assange, uh, but we uphold all of your hate on freedom of the press because we're the UK. And then uh, US came along and they went against this. They appealed and uh, UK said, OK, US, you get your way, you can extradite him. So this was the latest uh part of this saga where we decide whether or not Julian has even the ability to appeal this. The UK court announced this morning that Julian can appeal this extradition. It would go to the Supreme Court there. But here's the little caveat. Julian would be sending his appeal to the same high justice who just denied, <laughs> who just granted the US extradition. So he's literally appealing to the person to overturn his own ruling. So they're not high hopes for this. The whole thing is so completely rigged. I mean, I, I, I chatted to Assange's brother the other day and he was saying how all of these revelations of corruption that we've seen, all these court rulings and, and the indictment itself, if you dig into it, it's like another revelation in itself. It's so completely overtly uh, corrupt and disgusting. And this is probably one of the biggest threats to freedom of the press that we've seen in our generation. So a whole lot to dig into here. Really, really serious case that I think a lot of people are uh, not paying enough attention to because basically if this goes through, I mean, if this had gone through before the Snowden revelations, there's no way The Guardian would have printed what they had. There's no way The Washington Post would have printed what they did. There's no way The, UN, you, you, the um, uh, New York Times would have printed the Pentagon Papers. None of these would have gone through because the US is now setting a precedent where they can go after publishers for publishing documents and doing all the things that journalists do, like hiding the identity of their sources, uh, like asking for more information, like talking on encrypted chat with your source, like uploading documents to drop boxes. These are all part of the indictment that the government is calling hacking. Uh, so it's just an absolute uh, farce. It's, it's an absolute travesty of justice there. But let's dig into it. I'm going to throw it to the group there. Uh, Will, I'll throw it to you to start off with. What were your thoughts on all this? No, I think you're the expert on it, so I'm actually interested in hearing a little bit more of your opinion on this. I think that you do see kind of like this collision course between Bitcoin and the greater privacy landscape, which is really interesting to see like these two stories kind of play out at once. And I've seen a lot of conversations on Twitter and elsewhere about what is the world going to look like if we don't have something like Bitcoin. And I think with this Assange case, you kind of see a glimmer of that, right? Where someone who has been given due process, who every time they've been put in front of a judge, it's been in a hostile court, uh, and then the facts themselves are always disputed. There's government stuff going on behind closed doors. It's, it's very murky. So I, I think that it's interesting that these two things are happening at the same time. But I do want to give it back to you and kind of understand more about the scope of this story. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also there's a there's a nice tie in with the Bitcoin community because one of the first ever bull runs was when WikiLeaks accepted donations. So after Assange, I mean, Assange, just keep in mind that just a little caveat I want to mention. Let's say that the United States, let's say he gets doesn't get extradited, let's say he doesn't go to prison here. It's not like we can then throw our hands in the air and say, hooray, we've saved freedom of the press, because literally what happened is since 2010, this man has been hounded by the US government, hounded by them. He has been imprisoned for like 11 years now, whether it's inside the Ecuadorian embassy where he was spied on, whether there, there were assassination attempts, whether it's in maximum security prison, Belmarsh, they have succeeded in throwing this journalist behind bars for 11 years so far, regardless of what happens in this US extradition request. So that's an important thing uh, to remember there, that this, like we've already lost here. This is absolutely disgusting that this was allowed to, to happen. Um, um, but the 
the Bitcoin tie-in is interesting because one of the first things they did was they just erected a, a banking blockade, an illegal banking blockade against WikiLeaks. They banned PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa, all of them from processing transactions uh, to the WikiLeaks website. And it's interesting because I think it was around 20, so 2015, 2017, you had Assange then tweet out and say, hey, we just want to thank the US government for introducing all those blockades because it forced us to go and accept Bitcoin. And our holdings have gone up a ton since then. It was just like such an increase. So it's interesting that this was a real first use case of Bitcoin showing that it's censorship uh, resistant and how powerful it can be. You know, it gives you the power to spend your money where you want to spend it, support the causes that you want to support without intermediaries shutting down your choices. So it was a really pivotal moment in Bitcoin history as well and pivotal pivotal for WikiLeaks. But I think, I mean, I could go on all day about this. I probably am going to go on all day about this, but I'll throw it back to you, Zach, maybe for last words. Last words, just a great segue to Privacy Week. It's Privacy Week at Coindesk. There is a mm -hmm. ton of great reporting on the site as of today, looking into the issues of privacy and other things. Also, a fresh interview with uh, Chelsea Manning on the site from contributor Jeff Wilzer. So check it out, coindesk.com slash privacy week. That'll get you there.